in this video, uh, we're going to look at how to use the double angle formulas. So you can see them all over the screen. Um, it's we don't want to find tangent of A or cosine of A. We want to find double that angle. Okay. And we're going to break it up, of course, into things we know, like cosine A, tan A, sine A. So let's see how to do this. Our learning goal. So by the end of this video, the idea is, is that we'll be able to evaluate trig functions using the double angle formulas. Basically, we're going to solve a bunch of problems. And the way we're going to solve the problems is by using our double angle formulas. So here they are. Sine of 2a, 2 sine a cosine a. This is probably the easiest one and best one. Um, cosine of 2a, you have some flexibility and some like dealer's choice. Depending on what's going to be easiest for you, there's three interpretations of cosine of 2a. And use the one that is most convenient for you to use at the time. You'll probably bounce around between all three of these. It really just depends what's the most efficient kind of use here. And then tangent of 2a, 2 tan a over 1 minus tangent of squared a. Um, but also, right, who is tangent? Tangent is sine over cosine. And then you guys may be thinking, hey, those are three of the trig functions. We're missing those other three. We are indeed. But remember, cosecant is just 1 over sine. So if you figure out sine of 2a, you know cosecant of 2a. Secant of 2a is simply 1 over cosine of 2a. So once you know cosine of 2a, you also get kind of secant for free. And then cotangent is simply cosine over sine. Okay? So really, we only need sine and cosine, and we can get everybody else through ratio identities or through reciprocal identities. And let's see how to do that. So our first problem here, and let me move my little head down. Oh, no, my little head wasn't in the way. Good. Let sine of A equal negative 3 fifths, and this angle exists in quadrant 3. Okay, so let me... Let me draw exactly what that is. So I have my quadrants. This angle exists not in quadrant one, not in quadrant two, but in quadrant three. So let me plot my right triangle down there in quadrant three. I know sine of A is negative three fifths. What is sine? Sine is opposite, which means negative three is my opposite over hypotenuse, which means 5 must be my hypotenuse. Now I can complete the triangle here, right? Who belongs over here? 3, 4, 5 triangle, 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared, Pythagorean theorem. Um, I need to put a negative on my 4, right? Because where am I? If I'm going left and down, then I need to be negative, negative. So keep in mind always, where am I in space? So this 4 needs to be negative because this is x-axis negative over here. I got my triangle filled out. Who are we going to find first? Let's find cosine of 2a. Okay, well, there's three interpretations of cosine of 2a, right? Well, what do I know? I know sine of a. So with really out doing any digging, I kind of look through my list of formulas. Oh, looking, looking, looking. Oh, I'm going to use 1 minus 2 sine 2 sine squared a. Now, any one of these three formulas would be fine. This one, though, involves the least amount of work. Why? Because I already know what sine of a is. 1 minus 2 times what sine? Negative 3 fifths. Let me square it. Positive 9 20 fifths. This is sine squared of a. That was sine of a squared, square top, square bottom. This is sine squared of a right here. Okay, so that's 1 minus 2 times 9 is 18 over 25. Hit this with some fraction subtraction. 25 over 25. This will equal 7 over 25. So that is for cosine of 2a. Remember, 1 can be turned 25 over 25 and then do the fraction subtraction. Let me just go down my list of the colors here. All right, sine of 2a, only one formula here. We have to hit it with 2 sine 
a cosine a. We have no choice. We only have one. Okay, so two times what's sine of a? Hey, we get it in the problem. It's negative three fifths. Okay, what's cosine of a? Well, that's why I have this triangle. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. And now I'm off to the races. This is a big two, so it's two over one. Two times negative three, negative six times negative four will give me positive 24. One times five times five, 25. We have just figured out what sine of 2a is using double angle formula. Next, let's do tan of 2a. Okay, I could launch into this very uh, or more complex formula, or I can remember, hey, tan of 2a is equal to sine of 2a over cosine of 2a. Right, tangent of x is equal to sine of x over cosine of x. Okay, well, I know what sine of 2a is. I just figured it out here, 24 over 25. I also know what cosine of 2a is because I've done it already, 7 over 25. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So let's reciprocal this. 25 is goodbye, and I get 24 over 7. Figured out the tangent. Now to bring it all the way home, cotangent of 2a. Let's hit this with some reciprocal magic. Cotangent of 2a is just 1 over tangent of 2a, which means take what you got for tangent and flip it. Take what you got for tangent and flip it. Cotangent and tangent, these guys are reciprocals. So if tangent of 2a was 24 over 7, then cotangent of 2a will be 7 over 24. Beautiful reciprocal identities here. All right, so with our setup, we found cosine of 2a, sine of 2a, tangent of 2a, and cotangent of 2a, getting some ratio identities in there as well as some reciprocal identities. All right, let's do this all again. Oh, now my little head is in the way, so let me move myself. There we go. So, let tangent of x equal 5 twelfths with x in quadrant 1. Okay, let me draw my picture. Always draw your picture first. Um, x is in quadrant 1. So you draw a right triangle in quadrant 1. Here's the x in question. Tangent is 5 over 12. What is tangent? Tangent is opposite over adjacent, which means opposite is 5, and then adjacent is 12. What's my hypotenuse? 5 squared is 25. 12 squared is 144. 25 plus 144 is 169. Take the square root, and we get 13. So some Pythagorean theorem there to find our missing side. And now we're set up. I can tell you sign, I can tell you all six trig functions in terms of x, because I have all my sides. So first, set your triangle up. Find all sides, because then it's just basically plug and chug from here on out. OK. Sine of 2x. This is 2 sine a, cosine a. And I'm not using a's anymore. I'm using x, so pardon me. OK, sine of x, opposite over hypotenuse. So 2 times sine of x, opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of x, adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. And now we're off to the races again. 2 times 5 is 10 times 12, 120. 13 times 13 is 169. That's a 120. It looks like a 12 heart. 120 over 169. So I, I nailed down sine of 2x. Okay, let's now nail down cosine of 2x. And... Let's see, whose equation should I use? All of them will work out fine. Um, I'm going to use cosine squared minus sine squared. So look at all your list of your cosine of 2x formulas, right? There's three of them. I'm going to go with the cosine squared x minus sine squared x version. Now, again, pick your favorite. 
all of it will work out because you have a triangle so you can do really whatever you want. This is just the one that I'm going to pick um, because I've kind of had a premonition that doing this is less messy. With experience, you'll be able to pick out the most um, efficient equation to make kind of the easiest use of your time, but that comes with practice and experience. So cosine squared of x. What was cosine? Cosine was 12 over 13. Cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Sine is 5 over 13. And square it. So cosine squared is this. Sine squared is here. We're going to subtract. 12 squared is 144. 13 squared is 169. 5 squared is 25. 13 squared is 169. So the reason why I did choose this is because I knew that they would come out with really nice matching denominators and all I would have to do is subtract the numerators. But like I said, without practice, you would never be able to see this. All right, so like I said, with practice, you'll be able to choose kind of the easiest version of these guys to pick. 144 minus 25, that'll give us 119. And we have cosine 2x. All right, next on our list, secant of 2x. Secant of 2x. Okay, um, I don't have a formula for secant, so I have to use some relationships here. Secant relates to sine or cosine how? Oh, it's 1 over cosine. These reciprocal identities will be your best friend. They're going to save you a ton of work. Whoops. So secant is 1 over cosine, which means I figure out what my cosine was. Oh, got it here. Secant is the reciprocal. So if cosine of 2x was 119 over 169, then secant of 2x is going to be 169 over 119. In other words, just flip it, right? Reciprocal. And last, cosecant of 2x. As you can imagine, we're going to play the same game with this. Cosecant of 2x is 1 over sine of 2x. All right, and I know sine of 2x already because we figured it out here. So if sine of 2x is 120 over 169, cosecant of 2x is its reciprocal. So we're just going to flip it, and it is 169 over 120. So using reciprocal identities and double angle formulas, we figured out sine of 2x in this situation, cosine of 2x, and then we hit the reciprocal identities to figure out secant of 2x and cosecant of 2x. Ratio and reciprocal identities will be your best friend. So now that you have your formulas, go out, practice, practice, practice. Again, make mistakes, practice again, correct, make some more mistakes, do harder problems, make mistakes, correct, do even harder problems, make mistakes, correct, and then eventually you will be a double angle formula master. As always, if you guys have any questions, please, please, please don't hesitate to ask.